So takeaways from the car world. I think my first big takeaway is that there are are two different types of people that work in the car world from a client facing standpoint. So mm-hmm. I guess my examples are going to be very sales focused, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fine. Right? There are people that do it every day to come in and earn a living, mm-hmm. and that there are people that are so enthralled and passionate about the product, it just gives them an excuse to be around the actual vehicles themselves. Ding. <laughs> so not 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 to stereotype um but you'll find a lot of example one uh from my experience at your for the most part and again i don't mean to offend anybody by any means i know there's examples right, right, right. of this everywhere but the majority of people that i worked with before i entered the mini bmw world were very much that career-long professional salesperson right it was strictly a process uh they were checking boxes they earned a living they earned a good living uh, they were willing to sacrifice the weekends in order to provide properly for their family. And that right. is that is not a bad thing in the slightest. Right. And then there are people that might not be as refined from a sales process perspective mm-hmm. um, at, at the beginning, but they're so passionate and thrilled about the culture behind the brand and the product that, that they will do anything to be assimilated with it. Mm. And I think that as we move into a world where you're going to have two extremes, so You're going to have the ability, and you probably do now Mm. um, in Canada, you definitely do in the U.S., to buy your car online. Mm -hmm. You're going to see this massive split. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the people that are going to want to click the buttons to purchase their Ford Edge or Ford Escape. They're doing it with Tesla right now. Yeah. Yeah. Or and But you're also going to have that very dedicated, passionate group of people that want to spend time around someone who's passionate about the product. So Mm. someone like yourself, for example, You know, I, I, I don't mean to call you out by any no, means, no. but I can't imagine you not working at a Mercedes or something a BMW that I enjoy, like Mini, a product, that something, I enjoy. something that you're passionate about. Mm. I, I don't think and you're and, and I'm calling you out because I, I'm the same no, no, way. That's fine. I don't do well with complacency. Yeah. Like to me, to me, if I'm not emotionally charged about a situation that I'm in, I really don't want to be a part of it. And see, that's where when you touch on process and passion yeah. what i've learned is obviously process is going to sell me more cars but wasn't necessarily happier Meh. you know i don't know if i necessarily agree with that but i think wh- that i i think that when it comes to something that is greater than twenty five thousand dollars um consumers clients people are more educated than we are ever going to be thanks they've, internet they've yeah they've watched every youtube review right. they've seen every oem recall and to, and to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by the people in our forums that are like, oh, hey, the class action suit on water pumps for the R53 from 03 to 06 was finally settled. And, and many Canada is looking at implementing it in February 2021. Like, and then you as a sales guy. What? Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, and that's a real example, by the way. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's still going to be this draw of people that are grossly passionate that want to spend time around people that are passionate. Right. But what I'm saying is with, and that's where I kind of came to a crossroads at BMW was I found that my passion was selling. Like my, it was the passion for me that was selling cars. Yep. Not process. Yep. And But then when yep. I learned about process, I tried to blend the two together. And that's tough. And that's, I mean, it's amazing. If you blending it's wine and water yeah. or wine and beer. Yeah. You know, it's very, very different. Yeah. Acquired taste for both. But yeah. And my and so going back, my big takeaway was I would rather surround myself with good people that were passionate than right. great salespeople. Like Porsche. Porsche guys, I think, are now the most if you're looking at an industry of passion, yep. if you're to sell a product, I don't think that you can get more passionate than I Porsche. I always said if I'd go back, it would be to Porsche because it's such a culturally driven yeah. brand. That's There's the so dream. much passion behind it, right? So even like you remember when I was there, you know, the the guys that I would bring in from a sales perspective, Mm. they weren't necessarily quote unquote, great salespeople. I mean, Mm. I hired Matt Belcaster who I'd worked with at, at Ford and he was an established sales guy. And I, I knew that there'd be no handholding needed. Even if we were slightly different people, he loves his hand. He was like, he likes likes his bomb held a little bit. Actually. Yeah. Um, hey, shout out to Matt Matt Belcaster. uh, That's the way he, yeah, that's his little thing. Um, (laughs) 
but everybody else was really about finding good people that were excited to be part of that brand. I mean, you, you, you can teach someone process. You can teach them loose scripting in order to guide someone down a path, mm. but you can't teach the excitement of being in an environment. It's you, either there or, 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 or it's not. You can teach skill, but you can't teach attitude. You got it, man. I always say that. Passion. You, you cannot teach passion. No. You can always tell if someone's getting fired up about something and someone that is, is there because they need to be there. So my, so my big takeaway is surround yourself with great people that are passionate to be where they are in that moment. I agree. That was Couldn't my, agree more. That was my first, first big takeaway, and I will take that away literally forever. Yeah. Um, the second big takeaway I learned from Carr is really to reaffirm the phrase that it is normally much better to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. <laughs> So anybody who I uh, overstepped that line with at the Mini BMW World, not to not to call it any names, but uh, I officially asked for forgiveness. <laughs> so those those were probably my two my two biggest ones. Um, my third big takeaway from the car world is is even when you leave it, you never leave it. Mm. Um, even since I've been off, I've been able to help kind of broker deals between people in our community and you know, yeah. associated dealerships we had relationships with. Mm. And I, I think the reason why we never really leave it is because, you know, you you spend more time with those people at a dealership than than you really do at home. And that's an entirely different conversation. Yeah, you create so, relationships. You know, you, you, you and I haven't seen each other in 15 to 16 months, but Probably. we still communicate over text. When you said you were doing this, I remember saying, hey man, I'm in if you, if, 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 if you ever want to chat and you were like, really i you know i'd love that mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. that's that's really what the car world brought for me was this this network of people that i i genuinely want to spend time with mm. even after i'm no longer in that industry <laughs>